We so sorry, Skeptum, she said in a sense of guilt. You know you want to socialise, but I don't think we should. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down... Oh! Oh, hello, we've made it! <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, happy Halloween! Um, oh, oh, can you guess my costume? Guess, go on, guess. Well, you're not wrong. I am a wizard, but I'm a specific wizard. I'm Rincewind, um, you know, from Discworld. I think he might have popped up in the novels that uh, I showed you. Um, he tends to be in the first Discworld novels, which I admittedly don't tend to start people out on. Uh, the novels are very episodic, and he mostly pops up in the first ones, but um, he's a wizard who's very, very bad at magic. And I find that personally endearing for various reasons. Um... <laughs> Either way, uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, usually, I kind of have to spend Halloween alone, uh, to be honest. Um, most of the town tends to go off to the autumnal festival. Um, and, but, you know, me, uh, owning a magical bookstore, uh, I kind of want to be a bit more on guard uh, when the walls between the living and the dead kind of get thinner. Um, it should be fine, it should be fine. I just generally put a bit of extra salt on the windows, um, a little bit of extra milk out for the fairies, uh, those sorts of things. But it should be fine. It should be fine. Either way, I haven't gotten to celebrate Halloween with another person in so long. And I'm so excited. So thank you for coming. Um, I've got a bunch of scary movies ready in the book nook. Um, admittedly not too scary. I don't want to watch, like, I don't know, The Floy. Um, the scariest thing in the pile might be Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island. But Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island, underrated horror classic, in my opinion. Quite a Scooby-Doo fan. Hope that's not weird or, uh... Unlikable. Um, oh, and I'm getting in my own head. Oh, either way. And what are you dressed as? It's lovely. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't believe I didn't see it before. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh, we dressed up just for me. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, either way, um, why don't we head off to the book nook? I've got some autumnal teas uh, waiting for us, along with some various snacks, cakes, and candy. Admittedly, not much of a candy person, me. Um, I tend to like... Uh, you know, baked goods, cakes, muffins, pies, but I have a huge selection of candy, and you can eat most of it. Are you excited? I'm excited. Come on, let's go. Um, let's see. <laughs> Do you like the decorations, by the way? I got a bunch of fake ravens uh, earlier, but I noticed they kind of started flying, so I kind of got rid of them. Except for the one that, you know, flew off. Uh, he can stay, I named him Pop, it's great. Um... But, in the meantime, uh, just, you know, uh, keep your wits about you. Everything will probably be fine. Probably, probably be fine. But, you know, there's this weird incursion where there's, like, a harvest moon on Halloween. And that vaguely worries me, but it'll probably be fine. As I said earlier, I'll keep warning you, and I hope I'm not freaking you out, because everything's going to be fine, because I am the in-charge skunk. Um, but, just in case, uh, stay close. I'll just curl my tail around your side. Um, I've got to say, I know I mention it a lot, but it is fairly nice just to be able to casually do that with someone. Because, you know, it's kind of a giant part of me, and it, people are kind of scared of it most of the time. I mean, I don't smell, or at least I don't think I do. Um, one of my friends said, or, well, acquaintance, I suppose. One of my acquaintances says, um, when it does kind of get a little scented, it kind of smells like cheesecake. And I, I thought that was a kind of cute smell to have. I don't know. It's nice. It's textured. Well, I mean, if a scent is going to rub off on someone you like, it might as well be something like cheesecake. Maybe strawberry cheesecake. Not that I want you to smell like cheesecake because you spend a bunch of time around me. Um, just warning you, there might be something people say. Oh, um, okay, anyway, book nook. Book. Oh, you found something. What have you got there? Oh, book pages. Hmm, well, that's vaguely worrying. <laughs> It's fine, everything's fine, um, but you know, the bookstore doesn't love book damage, and I don't know who caused it, because I would never harm a book, ever. It's just like, not a part of my soul, so if I didn't do it, and you just got here, who took out these book pages? Want to hand them here? Oh, wait a moment. These aren't printed, these are handwritten. Huh. There's a name at the top. Edgar Hodgson. Oh, Edgar Hodgson. Um, I remember I mentioned to you that I did some research um, into prior clerks of the bookstore, and he was one of them, uh, a black cat fellow. 
if I recall. I don't know, I think the bookstore might slightly attract species that other people avoid. And maybe book clerk kind of people tend to be a touch reclusive. I don't know, but um, I was curious about him because there's not much info on Edgar Hodgson. Records of him kind of stop sometime around the 1930s. It's kind of weird, to be honest. You know, I have to say, I am a bit on the fence about reading someone else's journal. But uh, maybe it'll give us a clue as to how these pages ended up here? I mean, and if he did kind of, I don't know, mysteriously vanish in the 1930s, then it's kind of more historical record than it is reading someone's private thoughts. So, could be harmless. We could read it, I guess. Um, seems as though it was lying in the direction of the horror section. Oh, and there's another page here. Oh dear, they're all leading to the horror section. Admittedly, when I was younger, I was a big horror fan, but kind of evened out a bit, and I haven't checked out horror in some time. It's kind of um, a slight blind spot I have as a book clerk, um, and I don't love it, so I've been meaning to check out the horror section, but in a bookstore like this, I've somewhat avoided it. Still, if there are a bunch of lost pages in the bookstore, we should probably handle that before we settle in for our little uh, Halloween thing. I hope you don't mind an errand. Sorry, I don't want to turn this into work. Oh no, you come over and help me shelve so often, but I don't want to promise you a Halloween get-together and then make it about book restoration, although I love book restoration. If you want to talk about book restoration, then I can talk about that for hours, but um, by the way, it shouldn't take long. Uh, let's just uh, walk in this direction and see if we can find the other pages. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's read and see what we can say. Dear Journal, I am happy to report that I am the owner of a bookstore now. A long time dream of mine. I have been a fan of books my entire life, and to own such a collection of tomes is nothing short of astounding. The horror section in particular is of intense interest to me. I have always had a passing interest in the macabre and unknown, and now I find myself the master of a million different kinds. It has been a few days since I became this store's clerk, which is why it has been some time since my last entry. I've been too busy, too astounded by this place to chronicle my adventures, but I feel it's only right to record them for posterity. You see, I came upon this shop via an ad in the paper. It is located in the town of Burnell. Already a fairly strange place, I will admit. Stranger still, I came to own this shop without speaking to a single soul. When I arrived, the deed was simply sitting on the counter next to a bit of parchment. The message left for me instructed to sign the deed and leave my money on the counter, a pittance I shall add for such a store. Despite this oddness, I did as the message bid. I felt a strange tingle journal when I finished signing, and while at first I chalked this up to excitement, I feel this place does indeed have some magic about it. You see, dear journal, the shelves that line this bookstore never quite seem to end. I wandered through the biographies and eventually came to names I did not recognize and which did not seem to share the syllables and naming conventions I know. It was my first jaunt into the depths of the store, and as I write, I shiver with excitement at what lies within the other sections. I have not had the time to peruse the horror books, but the way that its aisles continue on into only darkness, with no hint of a far wall, is both frightening and exciting. Oh, well, that was rather benign, wasn't it? <laughs> it's rather nice, actually. Uh, I kind of felt similarly when I came across this bookstore. I always kind of wanted to own a bookstore, but, uh, you know, you think, oh, I could never be a business owner. I'm a child. <laughs> and, you know, everyone thinks that, even when you're like 40 or 50 or even like 70. Everyone's basically just a 12-year-old running around in an adult brain. But I was so excited uh, when I got the bookstore, and I also got it through slightly anomalous means. Um, still, I have to say, it makes me a little curious. If he vanished, I kind of just figured he moved or, like, he popped off, but he really seemed to love the bookstore. I mean, it's not unusual for past clerks to just kind of 
leave. It's a big responsibility, but reading this journal, I don't get the idea that's what he did. Keep an eye out. Um, oh. <laughs> Seems we're getting very close to the horror section. Um, you know, I said I got rid of all those stuffed ravens. Uh, so why are there more stuffed ravens in this area? Oh, oh. Oh, you're not stuffed. <laughs> did the one that flew off find friends, do you think? Either way, of all the things the bookstore could generate today, gotta say, ravens, not the worst. Not the worst. Um, oh, oh, wait, hey, hello. Hi, buddy. Uh, you've got some pages in your mouth there. Uh, you mind, you mind, you mind if I just, uh, 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 it's gonna, it's gonna take that. Ah, got it. Ah, there you go. Um, have you got a peanut or something? I feel like we should tip him if he found more pages. Um... Do you tip ravens? He's looking at me. I think I've got like a circus peanut in my pocket. Don't ask me why I hate circus peanuts, but um, I'll just get like there you go. Um, oh, okay, boy, boy. I wonder if that was the one I named Quoth. Might be. Can't tell. All the ravens look the same to me. I hope that's not spaciest. Of course they're you know, they're like feral, so can... anyway, anyway. Uh, more pages. Uh, should we keep reading? I mean, we've still got a ways to go till we get to the horror section proper, and it might, uh, let us know how to put the pages back in his journal if we find it. Uh, so, let's continue. Dear Journal, Sorry for ending the last journal without much in the way of further detail. My writing was interrupted by a customer. The strange thing is, she did not come in from the door, but from the shelves behind me. Before I could ask how long she had been there, she asked me if I was the new owner. I, of course, said yes, and found my questions about her origins floating to the back of my mind. She was exceedingly beautiful, Journal, and it was hard to keep a clear thought as she came closer to the counter. Her voice was like the sound of bells. She told me she knew the last clerk and that she wished me well, but that I should proceed with caution. Curiosity, she continued, often kills the cat. Hmm. The morbidity of this gallant's humor shook me from my bedazzlement for a moment, but before I could inquire about further details regarding such a statement, she presented me with a box in which inside was a feather brooch. It seems to me not to be just any brooch, but a minor marvel. I can run my fingers along its silky edges, and it responds as any real feather would. But it never breaks nor overly bends. So fascinated was I by this trinket that I do not know how long I stared at it. When I looked up to thank her, however, the woman was gone. I did not hear the bell above the entrance door jingle, and my attempts to look for her turned up nothing but shadows. At the end of my search, I found myself looking down into the depths of the horror section again. I will admit, dear journal, that I wondered if my courage might fail me as I looked down into those dark depths. I cannot help but feel some warning in the fox's words. But if I did not have curiosity, would I truly be a book clerk? <laughs> I felt the brooch warm and light in my hand. A sensation prickled up along my tail to the tips of my ears. The sensation of a crossroads. Two paths had branched before me. I noticed then that the horror section's flooring was covered in a thin layer of dust. They say the unread story weeps, and thus, with the paths for my life laid out before me, I took the one less traveled. What? Is that all this? Huh. I've got to say, I'm kind of getting invested now. I mean, I, I've looked up records of prior clerks, but I've never, like, had a journal from one before. Like, somebody kind of shared my experience. I mean, I kind of avoid the horror section, but, um, you know, it's kind of interesting to see that there's a history of this sort of thing, and I'm not alone in it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting in my own head. Um... We should find more pages, I think. Um, that'll be interesting, uh, for, you know, multiple reasons. Hopefully, it's just, uh, he finds, I don't know, like, uh, a puppy in the, in the horror section or something, and it all ends well. 
Hopefully. Maybe. Uh, judging from your face, I don't think you think that's what happened. It's what I hope happened. I don't know. I tend to be the optimist. Um, oh, by the way, uh, onwards. Uh, we're getting really close to the horror section now. You can kind of tell because um, I didn't decorate it this way. The horror section is one of the most changeable areas of the bookstore. Um, being infinite as it is, uh, you know, sometimes weird things end up in here, and I don't love it, but, um, uh, we, we should press on, um, hopefully we'll find the whole book, maybe? I'd like to repair it if I can, um, you know, I kind of feel like, uh, oi, oi, oh, egg lad. I do wonder who that fox woman is. You know, I've had odd, uh, customer incursions. Not just Glenda. Oh, I don't like Glenda. She's probably that kind of person who gives out raisins. Ew. Either way, um, you know, occasionally I'll, I'll see someone in here that I don't think came in through the front door. Um, I've been seeing a mouse person lately, and I'm kind of curious if it's the same sort of thing. Um, not to worry you. Um, every time I've seen her, she's been very, very nice. Um, but still, uh, it's very interesting to have another perspective on this, and I think we should definitely press on. Um, oh! Look, there, on the floor. Uh, there's, there's more pages. Um, okay, okay, um... Oh, I think this is another entry entirely. Um, let's keep walking, uh, I'll, I'll read. Dear Journal, I explored the horror section, though I did so at midday. Unlike the other sections of the store, this one has no windows. Thus, I was in need of a candle only a few yards past its border. I cannot help but feel the darkness was a natural journal. It seemed to crowd in around my flickering candle flame, as though eager to smother it out and leave me within the company of the dark. But my candle held. Unlike the other sections, the horror books lay within a maze, with twists and turns. I have always been able to find my way back to the entrance of this store, but this place makes me wonder... I keep seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Long, unnatural shadows. Uh, movements, it seems. Uh. <clears throat> in, in any case, it seemed to me as though something were calling from within the maze. At times I heard creaking, like old trees in the wind. And at times even the sound of that hollow gust reached my ears. I soon found out why, Journal. There's a wood within the bookstore. At the center of the maze, and I'm not sure how I know it's the center, is a wood populated by the most forlorn-looking trees I have ever seen. Their spindly branches reach toward an unnatural sky the color of fetid swamp water. Stranger still, their trunks are shelves, Journal. Books, old and water damaged, sag against one another on wooden planks. I perhaps should have turned back then, but curiosity possessed me. I reached up to the nearest tome and removed it. It took some doing, but I pried it from its long rest within the trunk of that tree. And I opened it to read. Oh, Edgar. Mm. Well, I have to say, I don't like how this is sounding. Um, do, do you think we should keep reading? I mean, I am, I am curious, but now I'm getting steadily more concerned. <sighs> Still, I, I did say, um, if I called Overlook to put the journal back together, but I really can't do that without, um, without reading it all. Um, you don't have to help if, if you're getting uh, a little bit scared. It's fine. Um, I can do this on my own. I don't want to freak you out or, or make you worry for me. I think I'm fine. Um, I do worry a lot. That the bookstore kind of sets itself by its clack. Um, one of the main things I first encountered when I got the bookstore was the fantasy section. And I can't help but think that set the tone of my clerkship. I wonder if Edgar interfaced with the horror section at the wrong time, what might have happened. And, and again, I don't want you to have to shoulder the burden of whatever might be in the rest of these journals. Oh. Okay, you're hugging me. <laughs> well, that's nice. My leg is rather cold. Um, it is October. Um, but, yeah, I'll hug you back. Um, okay, if you want to continue, 
and we'll continue. Um, I'll, I'll just keep my tail around you a little tighter, I hope you don't mind. Of course, it's for your safety and not my comfort, I'm not scared. I'm, I'm very brave, in general, <laughs> as we all come. Um, but, um, I suppose we will press on? We are getting very, very close to the horror section now. I wonder about that wood that he found, because, um, I wonder if it's kind of like the cathedral I found, um, or the other places in the bookstore I know about, but a little darker, a little more horror-oriented. And what that might mean scares me a lot. <sighs> Still, um, let's see. We'll take a turn here. Um... Oh! <laughs> Um, not to worry, not to worry, um, it seems as though a bookshelf has grown up between us. It's fine, it's, um, absolutely fine, um, I know how to deal with this, it's not the first time it's happened to me. Um, I will go around the side, you go around the other side, and we'll meet at the front of the shelf. It'll be fine, it'll be absolutely fine. Just follow me, follow the sound of my voice. Um, I'll keep talking, um, what do I keep talking about? Um, I don't know, um, I think that... Ah, uh, Neil Gaiman. <laughs> I hope my rambling wasn't too much. Um, if you get me started about my favourite authors, I can go on for ages. Oh, 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 are you alright? Oh, come, come here. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, I'm singing, or oh, 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 wasn't singing. Um, I mean, every time you've ever heard me singing, I oh, you kind of, uh, you know, surprise me. I don't tend to love doing it in public. Oh, you heard, you heard my voice. Well, that's not good. I think um we should maybe hurry up a little bit. Um, I found some more pages while we were separated. Um, maybe we should keep reading? If you're alright. Are you alright? Please be alright. Okay. You wanna keep reading? Okay. Let's keep reading. Dear Journal, The brooch did... something. It has been several days and I am sure of it. The strangeness I encountered within the internal wood of this bookstore was... The brooch lit up as the darkness closed around my candle. I thought it was a trick of the candle, but I feel I have narrowly avoided something grave. Ever since then, the brooch seems duller. The feather soft touch it once had is harder now. It is almost less silver and more brass. I have been having bad dreams. The foxwoman has visited me several times. I never see her enter but her beautiful face seems lined with concern when I see her. I have attempted to ask her questions, but her answers are short, mercurial. I have wondered if I should tell her what I encountered in the wood, but whenever I come close, I feel this touch. No, it's not touch. It's something deeper than that, like the sensation of a spider skittering across one's skin, but... but deeper than skin. I feel an urge to return to the wood of the bookstore journal. At times I find myself wandering that way, but I always end up distracted at the last moment. A book will tumble from a shelf, or, or a customer will come in. More often than not, it is the foxwoman who stops me. I found her steering me away from the horror section just this afternoon. Her tail cashed me a soft against my back as she led me to the book nook. We shared tea, then. I cannot help but feel we are acquaintances now, though attempts to gleam her name seem equally fruitless. Her birdsong voice read thusly, <clears throat> Beware false faces, my January friend. I hope to see you past year's end. Feathers float on dearest winds to help those who wish to make amends. When a voice rings from the well, sweet and soft with stories to tell, 
Beware false faces, January friend. I hope to see you past year's end. The poem resonates. Oh dear, I wonder if that poem means anything. I don't think this fox woman is evil in this story, but I, I don't know. It seems as though she's trying to warn Edgar about something, but what? What is she trying to warn him about? Oh, 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 we reached the horror section. Okay, um, well, I guess I got uh, caught up in the journal. Okay, uh, there seems to be mist coming from it. That seems a little not great, possibly. Um, oh, there's another journal page, and of course, it's right there, deep within the horror section. There's dust. <laughs> I guess, should we take the path less travelled, as Edgar would say? It's probably... You know, I'm going to stop saying this is probably fine. Uh, there might be something dangerous down there. And I don't know if I can ask you to come with... Oh. Oh, okay, you, you're definitely coming with me? I was quite, okay, I was quite hoping you'd say that. Admittedly, I was going to put it on the brave, skunk face sort of thing. Although my face doesn't really do the whole brave face thing too well. So, I don't think it was very convincing. Um, alright, alright. Um, let's go forwards. Um, I'll, I'll pick up this. Um, there we go. Um, oh wow, it's almost enough for the entry. Oh, but let's step forwards. Oh dear. Oh, you know... There's a lot of famous horror here at the entrance of the horror section. I've got a very healthy respect for it. Because I think horror shows us who we are. What we are afraid of is kind of a big part of who we are. It really makes um makes up what we what we love as well as what we what we hate and what we try to avoid. And I really try to avoid nothing in my life. I try to be inclusive of all ideas of of all schools of thought, and to entertain them for just moments before I decide what to make my core self. And I think that horror is a huge, huge important part of that. But, at the same time, I've really neglected this part of the bookstore, and I wonder if I shouldn't. If even though it is dangerous, even though it is something I fear, even if something might have happened to Edgar, if I avoid this problem within the store, will it get worse? I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. And that deeply frightens me, perhaps more than anything that this section could throw at me. Oh dear, there's some more pages. Let's read. Dear Journal, in my dreams I am in the wood and I can hear a familiar voice, perhaps the fox woman's voice, asking me to come. It asks if I am truly a book clerk, if I do not tend to all the tomes within my care, it asks after my love of horror, and as I awake, I feel a shadow looming over the bed. The room is pitch black, journal. There is nothing that should be able to cast shadows. I find my mind turning to horror more and more lately. Why do we feel drawn to that which we do not know? The unknown is the most frightening thing, the basis of all horror. Is it perhaps that we... Those graced with sentience have an innate curiosity that our drive to learn outweighs our fear of the dark, that we wish to tickle that razor's edge with stories and song. It is a riddlesome thing, this interest. I am curious about the dark journal. I have been seeing things out of the corner of my eye, the shadows of forlorn branches swaying in a wind that is not there. Yesterday, I heard a voice among the shelves, a voice sweet with birdsong. It asked me to come to the wood. I felt my mind clear then, as though I was unable to hold a single thought within my head. My feet moved on their own journal, towards the dark, towards the wood. The brooch caught the sunlight, and all at once I found myself freed. I did not visit the horror section journal. But the brooch now is duller than ever. Its luster is gone, and its softness is stiff, almost brittle. I wonder how much has it left to give? 
The fox woman visited me this evening. The worried lines that wrinkle her beautiful face were intense. She sat with me, resting on the counter as I looked over the store's finances. She seemed, perhaps, resigned in a way. Though she did not say goodbye, I feel there was some finality to our conversation. I asked her if she had called to me earlier that day. She said she had not. The dark dreams continued. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just thinking. Um, I'm very sorry this fun Halloween outing is going to become this weird bookshop thing. Um, I know I keep apologising. Um, and you're here with me, and you've agreed to stay and uh, be stalwart through all of this, and I dearly appreciate it. But sometimes I wish my life was slightly more normal, and never more than when I find things like this. People think, oh, magical bookstore, magical book clerk, everything's all fun and games all the time, oh, you have tea with a dragon. I did have tea with a dragon. Her name was Wisteria, and she was absolutely lovely. Much better than our last dragon we met. Far more conversational. But I'm getting slightly off track. I worry some days that something bad could happen to me. Or, or you, oh, I can't even imagine that. But, boy, we need to take this job seriously. And I think this is kind of teaching me that. Maybe the bookstore is trying to teach me a lesson to be more wary of the things I encounter here, to think smart, and to be the best me I can be. But that's all anyone can ask of me, even in these dark, dark circumstances. Oh dear, these pages are just rather stained with something. It's not blood, but it's viscous. That worries me. That very much worries me. Oh. Oh dear. This is... This is the wood. But, but I, I've taken this way before. Oh God. There are the, 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 the trees that, that Edgar was talking about. Oh, Mr. Hodgson, what did you find? What did you do? Oh, oh dear. Well, I don't think we should go into the wood. But I kind of feel like I have to know what happened to Edgar. <sighs> Maybe I could ask the bookstore a favor. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like this place is alive, in a way. And it's a friend of mine, and I think the bookstore cared for Edgar, but there was something else, something here, that might have done something to him. And I want to know what happened. I really do. Um, bookstore, if you're listening, could you help us finish this story? Maybe. Um, it, it, it might be a big ask, I don't know, but one more entry if you've got it. Um, I want to repair the journal, if I can. I want to know what it says. I want to know what happened. Is there a last entry? And could you share it with me? Please. Ah. Oh, the wind! Oh, come here. <gasps> Pages, grab them! Okay, um, okay, um... Oh, oh dear. Uh, thank you, bookstore. Um, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll dust later. I, I, will, I will definitely dust. When I've been putting it off, I will dust. I guess we should read this. Oh, God. The handwriting is very shaky and unkempt. Um, it was worried about something. Oh, dear. Well, if this is the last entry, we should read it and find out what happened. Dear Journal, <laughs> Time seems strange now. I find openings and closings blending. Customers with clothes I do not recognize or which has been out of fashion for centuries wander through the aisles. How long have I been a clerk? The dreams of the wood are so intense now. I cannot fight them. I have not seen the fox woman again. In my dreams last night, long shadows fell across my body, and that spider skittered touch upon my soul gave an unfettered caress. The brooch flashed lightly, and then was dark. Always dark. I stand before the horror section now. 
I have my tallest candle and my favorite book, a collection of horror stories, if you can believe it. <laughs> Despite all I've been through, I still feel some kinship with this dark genre. I think that if I am to be myself, I cannot wait until I am called to the wood. I must go of my own volition and meet it. My hand shakes, candle flame quivering as I stand before the shadows of my path, the path less taken, but now very familiar. I can hear the wind in the wood journal. I hope at the very least my endeavors into the dark will find some information, some clue as to what's going on here for future customers, perhaps future clerks. A voice is calling to me sweetly from the darkness from the trees. You know, I I always fancied that one day I might write horror novels. After all, I finally have a venue in which to sell them. Who knows? Perhaps this will be fodder for some ghost story. I wish you well, journal and reader. Edgar Hodgson. I would write the date, but I fear I have long forgotten it. For now, what lies before me is the darkness and the wood. May my candle shine bright and my courage not fail me. Oh dear. Oi, I guess this is the last entry. There's no date on it. No proper date, no, no, he couldn't have written one. But I get the feeling this was written right before he disappeared. Is that all we're going to find out about what happened to him? I suppose that might be fitting. Um, he did say that horror is the fear of the unknown. And there's nothing scarier than the unsolved mystery. <sighs> oh dear, there you go. What's that? Glinting in the light there. It's a brooch. A feather brooch. Made of brass. Edgar. Well, I guess I'll pin it on. It doesn't really match my costume, but fashionable? Seems like a good way to remember Edgar, boy. Um. You see that? Just within the wood. There's two books lying there at the base of a tree. They're not even on the shelf. Who knocked those out? You know what? I was going to ask who knocked those over, but creepy forest in a bookstore. Um, probably nothing good. I'm going to try to grab them. Ah, uh, you stay here. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, okay, I got them. Um, oh, it's Edgar's journal. Um, okay, um. Oh. The pages are in German. But it's the same handwriting. Why are these pages in English? I can't read German. Well, let's see. They fit perfectly, the pages we found. And, oh. They're not in... They're not in English anymore. Oh, all right then. I guess... I, I can repair this over the weekend. Oh, if I can't read it, at the very least, I can make the journal whole again. He deserves that. But, but you know what the second book was? Do you know what I found? It's a collection of scary stories to share with friends. Boy, Edgar Hodgson. I don't know when he wrote it. I don't know if anyone else ever saw it. But I think I'm going to contact a friend of mine in publishing. See if I can't get this published. Edgar did always want to write horror stories. And I think it's only right that no matter what happened to him, people will read them. Um, I guess if I have all I need to repair this book, uh, that's the end of it. That's disconcerting, but, um, quite a, a spooky way to spend All Hallows' Eve, right? 
Um, let's go back to the book nook. Um, yes. Well, I think it's time for some tea. Some some very warm, very sweet tea. <laughs> um, let's go. Sandman, who is he? Who's the Booba? 